Country of Bowie Shoes, we're going to Rossborn, and this is Inside Exec. Today we're going to explore whether you should encourage leadership over management. Now this is brought about by a question that I was asked about whether there is a difference between being a leader and being a manager, and I think there is. I think there's quite a, a, a difference, and I think there are a lot of good managers out there who are not necessarily leaders and who don't need to be leaders. I don't think one should be inclusive or exclusive of the other. And I wonder in organisations whether we can see the difference and in seeing the difference whether we are in organisations where they do encourage leadership over management in terms of succession planning, in terms of project management or the long-term viability of an organisation, is it our responsibility in organisations to actually encourage leadership over management? I think if you refer to one of our earlier podcasts, we talked about the way that a place is going and the disruption and not sticking to the old structure is going to be, we're going to see more of. So it's very, very relevant to what we're talking about now because at one point you might be the leader and at one point you might be the manager. So again, it depends what you're working on. In general, let's just talk a little bit about the the main differences, if you like, or the some of the standing aspects of a leader and a manager. To me, as soon as I think of a leader, I think is. Is, is this person a good leader? I always think, is this person visionary? Are they thinking ahead? Is what we're doing going to be sustainable and relevant for the future? Is this a person I want to follow? When I think of a manager, I think, is this person going to make things happen in a sense of execution? Going to have the right team? Is he going to be able to manage the resources and the budgets and, and do that? And again, we can... Um, in a workplace, we can be both, as Kim said, or we can be different roles and uh, put a different hat on. One of our very early podcasts, we actually look at we looked at what leadership qualities do we individually look for in a manager. So we all had already identified at that stage that we saw them as different roles, as different things, and that the leadership term actually encompassed qualities that might carry you through a whole range of roles rather than a specific task. It's a bit like when we talk about being a coach and a mentor and and an accountability partner. Everyone has a different view of what those roles are and I'm sure that you will all have a different view of what leadership qualities are, what management qualities are and therefore what we should be encouraging in terms of leadership and, and what we should be encouraging in terms of management skills. So I guess that perhaps then that triggers the thought that are we talking about a difference between qualities and skills? It can be both and it can be either. I mean, as far as as a leader, I want also to be that person that raises the bar all the time, a person that will take that risk to make us look even higher than we thought it was possible. A manager will make sure that we, again, back within the resources, within the timeframes, we achieve the goals that we set to achieve and make them happen. Still managing people in a sense of looking after your people, a leader will make you think, I can do more, I can aspire to more, I can be more strategic in my thinking. In terms of organisational management, so you're in a a senior role and you're looking at the resources across your organisation, are you identifying leaders at the same time as you are identifying managers, potential managers? Yes, I, I think if... If I had my way, I would want to make all managers leaders because you can be a leader. If you have the traits of a leader and think like a leader and have following, you can have the management skills to make things happen as well. You know, you need both in, in all jobs. To be a good leader, you don't have to be a great manager. You can have somebody managing for you. To be a manager, it doesn't stop you from being a good leader within your own space this it's exactly what you said earlier i i don't see them as they can be separate roles at separate times mm-hmm. but i can be a leader and a manager and a manager can be a leader and a manager anybody can
Yeah, so I don't think that every manager needs to be a leader. I think that we run the risk when you have that in an organisation, we run the risk of giving ourselves a very difficult management task overall mm. because you've got all these high flyers, all these people who are on the, the fast path to being important, if you want to put it in that term. And what we might need is a range of people who are good managers, who get a task done. A leader doesn't necessarily get a task done, but a manager will. And I think that sometimes we just need people who can manage a task from beginning to end and not necessarily lead. I agree with that and how I would differentiate it, how I make that happen. If a person is, they choose for themselves to be the best manager and they want to do that, that's very much treasured. Not expecting them to be a leader, but if a manager, a really good manager wants to be a leader, then they can. It's putting the right value on the role and the right value is whatever you want to be. If you want to be in the processing side, well, we do need that, and that's a really, really good thing that you love it and you're passionate about it. If you love being behind the counter serving someone, that's excellent. But if you're there, it doesn't mean you can't do something else if you want to. That's all I'm saying. In organisations, do we see now a focus on or, or a, a predisposition to recognising leadership over management? Do we encourage leadership and not encourage management as much? Maybe. I think in some cases you, you see you see a bit of that. I'm thinking about the more fluid way of running an organisation. I'll use an example of where we do peer reviews in an organisation I used to work in. There were peer reviews and those peer reviews used to be across it's global. So you had a, a team from one or from various countries going to do a peer review of their equivalent area. But when you were actually there, there was different people getting the lead role. So in that sense, so today you're the lead on something, tomorrow I'm a lead on something else. The relationship changed completely. You're the leader. You're talking strategic. You're organising as distinct to managing. I might be the team manager working for you as the lead. And tomorrow it can be the opposite. And I think I, I like that idea because then you you get to do things that best people for that job at that time mm -hmm. will come through. On the other hand, I very much respect the fact that some people aren't comfortable in certain roles, but they excel at others, and we should respect that and, and nourish it as well. In that, Nurture se it, sorry. In that sense, then, mm. are we not making clear what we see as leadership? Because if you've got someone who is really good at the task that they're doing, mm -hmm. they're, they're the task expert, yeah. are they not in some sense the lead expert, the leader expert. They're the, they're the yep. lead uh, authority on this. And so, so leadership mm. in that sense is not about, it's not the management type of leadership. It's yep. leadership in, yep. in the subject or it's leadership yep. in, in pursuing the task. It's leadership in the process, whatever it is. But it's mm -hmm. not, not leadership in inverted commas, management, it's leadership task or leadership activity. It's like subject matter expert yeah. and the yeah. leader in that field. Yes. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. like the, the scientist in yeah. a certain and so, field. Uh, uh, yeah. In, in, in yeah. our organisation, are we losing the ability to recognise that and to celebrate that because we're, we're defining leadership in the organisation as being more related to management mm. in a broader sense? I think traditionally we did that, the, the latter, and, and then thinking, thinking of a leader, it's the person that the people follow is the leader, and that person usually described as either charismatic or no matter what sort of personality they have, introvert, extrovert, they still... Knows all the good and, pubs or that. <laughs> or, or maybe the quiet one, but everybody respect that. When he or she say a word, we all listen because we know he's thinking way beyond our thinking and mm -hmm. we want to learn and grow. So, yeah, we traditionally thought about that, the person who's a visionary, who is good at having people follow them. Mm 
And so, so they, they lead the thinking or they lead the activity yeah. rather than lead manage the activity. Yes, yes. If, yeah. if we look forward, if we look to the change in, in the way we work and the makeup of the workforce, will we be looking for leaders or will we be looking for managers? I think you'll always be looking for both in my book because somebody can come up with a great idea and see a vision. That vision is only as good as when it gets implemented. <laughs> and if some people are more visionary than doers, get bored after coming up with the idea, move on to another idea, then you need someone who would actually turn that into reality and make it happen. So it becomes fruitful. Like if you think about Edison who invented the light bulb, well, that's fine, but that was fantastic and it was revolutionary and it was way ahead of its time. What happened if nobody thought about now? Well, let me make sure that I can make that happen in every house. That's boring. It you was know. beyond the thinking. The actual topic that we had written down to talk about today was called encouraging leadership over management. So mm-hmm. we haven't really explored the encouraging side of it. Mm-hmm. So how do you, in an organisation, encourage leadership over management? I would look again on the innovative side, mm-hmm. saying. Just because we're doing it and doing it really well and we're leaders in the market, don't just stop there. Make sure that as a leader you come up with new ideas. So that shows leadership. It shows risk-taking in a a good way. And it's saying, I can do something nobody has done because if we do this or, or do that. So in that sense. In other words, create an environment as a leader to encourage that across the organisation, and if you cascade that feeling down, everybody then would be rewarded, encouraged to be innovative and come up with new ways, new solutions, etc. Or do we go back even more basic than that and identify what are management skills that are required in the organisation across a whole range of things, so just be generic about the management skills, and then look at what are leadership qualities, again generic, that we would like to see in the organisation and give people the opportunity to think about where they fit in in the match of those skills and those qualities and then look at innovative ways of giving them the opportunity to develop in both those areas Mm -hmm. and to make the choice themselves about whether they want to be encouraged to do one over the other. Definitely, because people will find the the good fit for themselves. And I think the worst thing that you could do is just tell people they can't. And this way it makes them feel like less important, less useful. But if you say, give the opportunity, this is what we're looking for and where do you fit in? Or where they might think, oh, at the moment I fit in here, but I'd like to go there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll give them the opportunity and the training and the exposure to do so. It doesn't. Yeah. It also gives them the opportunity to say no. I don't. Yes. I don't want to do those things. I, I yes. want to focus on here. Correct. Or I don't want to do any of that stuff. I only want to do these things. Yes. And so they, so they make the yep. choice of one over the other. Mm-hmm. But it also gives them, I think, the opportunity to have some input to say, well, I think looking at the organisation and the way that. I have seen management develop over the years that you need to be looking for these skills as well or technology is going to change the way we do things so that management of the organisation will need this other skill. And in the same way with the leadership stuff, that they might have input, influence, activities outside of work where they've seen good leaders or they've recognised good leaders or they've had some leadership opportunities and they would like to see those qualities brought into the organisation. They see a benefit from from that as well. And so you get that influx of information and ideas and opportunity that you might not otherwise tap into if you don't open up the conversation. Yes, and I think the important thing in, in what you said is showing respect to the choice. Of course, you don't want 100% of your organisers say, I don't want to be a leader, I mm. just want to be a manager. That would never happen, but I'm saying artificially speaking. Yeah. But what if it does? What if they come into the organisation as subject matter experts? You know, mm-hmm. It's a specialist organisation. Yeah. Okay. And they've come in, they're doing a specialist task, they love that task, that's mm-hmm. what they chose for their career all those years ago, this is what yeah. they want to do, 
they've set their career path, this is the, the path I want to follow, I only want to do this. And you can't identify leaders within the organisation. Mm-hmm. You don't have the opportunity to bring them in. What do you do? Well, you will always have the opportunity was, to bring them I in. Was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping that she would have to hesitate before the answer. Well, you always have the opportunity to bring them in. And I think it's like with everything. is saying if I have 20 subject matter experts in A, but I only need three, I've got to make a call. Yes, I respect the fact that you want to continue to specialise there, but our organisation has changed since we hired you. We're going in a different direction now. We're going to be doing this, and I only need three of these kind. If I don't have anyone, that's what that succession planning that we covered before Mm -hmm. is about. I haven't got anyone that can take us there in that new direction I have to bring someone in from outside or, again, over time, grow the... But I can only grow the people that wanting to be there. And if they don't, that's fine. They might be with my organisation or somewhere else. I think that the innovative solution to that is one that should be considered because you might not have leaders identified within your organisation and you might not want to, for whatever reason, put resources towards financial resources towards developing one or bringing one in from outside. But we do, in this country particularly, have a wealth of knowledge in the in the grey workforce, in the retired workforce, and they are available. There, yes. There's websites now that are set up so that you can call on expertise from wherever. Yes. And if you identify the skills that you're looking for in terms of leadership and you bring someone in who's got that life experience as well as work experience and leadership skills, it's a different kind of catalyst for your organisation. It's not a threat in terms of of someone taking up a role or a job that wasn't there before or is being brought into oversight because you're all a bit deficient in what you're choosing to do. It's an opportunity for an influx of new information, new ideas and old experience. And I think that's a really good solution for those of you who are caught in areas of expertise where people don't want to take on the leadership role, that you do look for leaders from outside who just come in and spread their sunshine Mm. and get everyone moving, get everyone thinking. But it also gives all of these people someone to turn to Yes. Someone to look to, to lead them without them having to take away from the, the things that they love doing. For those of you who like movies that relate to topics, on exactly what Kim was saying, the movie in turn is of interest. All right, well now we've given you some activity to do outside of listening to us on the podcast. We'll leave it there. I'm Kim Bailey, she's Fuliana Osborne and this is Inside Exec.